Yo, what's up? We are now outside my home and behind me here you see a familiar car. This is Millennium Falcon. I have bought him back. The legend is back, guys. <laughs> I'm so happy to have him back. I'm going to tell you the whole story about it. It needs really deeper explanation, but it's getting cold now. Uh, I mean, it's, it's getting, uh, it's getting uh, dark soon, so we have to hurry and expect the exterior. So um let me see wow you guys have seen this you some of you guys might be in tears right now what the heck wow Millennium falcon's back so um first thing is that and i didn't remember how it was but i had to check my old pictures the the classic model s p85 for in the beginning they didn't have black i mean they didn't have red brake calipers it was actually gray and these rims have been plastic dipped and it's starting to peel off now. The, it is the original five spoke Tesla rim, but you see it's been, yeah, dipped in black. Uh, so how are the brakes? Well, the brakes are looking okay, I guess. Yeah. And also when I told EV services in Bergen about buying back Millennium Falcon, they were thrilled. They wanted to do stuff with this car. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, let's see what else um the the door handles are working to my big surprise that's a common problem with the uh, model s is that the door handles will start to fail i think i had some failure with it before see pretty much everything that could fail on this car has failed before under warranty has been fixed i used to also have roof rack you see this seems to be the new new lid the old one was quite flimsy and it broke all the time this the protective film here is still here but the roof rack i don't know where it is and i have to say that the, the paint at least on the side looks remarkably good okay there are some micro scratches but the front side though has been it looks a bit faded especially this part here which is not metal but also tiny tiny bombardment of, of schmutz and sand and also the lights still don't have any weird uh, let me show you here. You see, there is no weird uh, yellowish tint on it or whatever. So, so the DRL still works, yeah. And also the one of the well, both headlights bulbs were replaced. Oh, that was four, five, five or six years ago. So, and it's still operational. I don't know what they did meanwhile. Under here, though, there's supposed to be something here. Tesla.com or something. They have removed it the license plate is still original yeah <laughs> um what else let me see oh wow this one oh this glass i mean isn't is it plastic yeah pl this is so so worn out now let me check the front so the classic this is the rear wheel drive it has a huge front you have no idea what items i was able to fit in here rims i don't know when i did the nimber task lots and lots of space here but you see the years has taken its toll it's starting to rust here and also if you look there that's also a common problem which is that uh, the the wiper arm is misaligned and you can see here that you see it's it's there's some slack here and also the wiper arm here is uh, is also rusted so that doesn't look too good so let me see, I'm going to try to close this front with one hand. That's what I did in the old days. <coughs> there, we go, there we go. Uh, so you can see here, when the wipers are running, it actually rubs into the hood. So it's pretty sharp here. Careful, guys. You can cut your, uh, your finger there. So it's been eating on that one for ages. And here's the wiper arm with lots of rust. I'm not sure what we can do to fix that one. You see, this is old school car without autopilot and without radar. There's no radar. It doesn't even have power falling mirrors. It's really old school. It was one of the few first ones to arrive in Norway, Europe in 2013. If I remember correctly, the delivery date was November 22nd, 2013. That was when the legend was born. Um, okay, let's see. What else should I? Okay, and then you have power lift gate, okay. And also this partial shelf has been to hell and back. Let's show you here. I've been taking this partial shelf 
in and out when I tr when I when I move the the goods. <laughs> yeah, so it's been taking a beating. Let me see. Let me try to put it back there in one hand. You can see fairly big trunk. What I like about the Model S is that it has a fairly big trunk. It has also Alcantara. Oh, hang on. This is always tricky. So, oh, hang on. Let me see. To, let me try to do. It. Yeah, there you go. You see, you can just fit it back there. I'm not sure if they have these kind of parts uh, anymore. What? How do? You see, there is no fit and finish. Well, yeah. Alcantara headliner. Let me see. There's supposed to be some. Dam there's a dent here. There was some nimber toss that dented that uh, rear lift gate. Uh, we also have stuff under here. See? Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, this one has the subwoofer, and over here we have some uh, the US UMC. This is the classic UMC. I might just pull it out there. Oh. There we go. The classic UMC. If I remember correctly, this is the state. Oh yeah, it's been beaten down. So. Yeah, so it, it fits nicely in, in there. You can just tuck it in there. There's a nice pocket there. But if you see the old one, if you have a, another pocket here, then it means that there is no subwoofer. This is the one with the sound package. It's very well equipped. This one also works. The backup camera, I don't remember it's been replaced, but it looks kind of dim. And you can see that it has been damaged. Uh, there was some one was one heavy item that went loose and then hit the the t lift gate from inside, and that's why you see this is not Tesla pan gap. It's because it was damaged. But I never bothered to fix it. I mean, it's just there was no water water leakage or anything. But you see that we have some weird gap here. Yeah, but I have to say that from here you can see that. The paint looks okay, but if you have sunlight, you will see tiny micro scratches. So, and then inside, oh, hang on, I could touch this one. No, what? Did he go into it? There we go. We have this type of seats. This is holy cow leather, but it seems like it, it needs some loving. It's still pretty okay. It seems like it hasn't been many passengers in the back here. Mainly, many times it's been folded. And you see the headrest. This is the old classic headrest, not adjustable, and also low headrest. And then just Alcantara headliner. Wow. <laughs> oh. And what can I see here? So listen, the lack of um, this, yeah, the lack of, of door pockets. And these dents could also be from items I put in. I put wheels, I put furniture, I put everything in here, really. And then the front, the front, this, the driver's seat here is really, and that has seen better days really. It's just shiny and dark and this, whoa, this, wow. This side bolster seems to have sunken down. I'm not sure how to show you. It seems like it's been, it's been compressed a lot if we compare to that side. So, yeah, driver's seat has been taking a beating. <laughs> so that, and uh, over here also, okay, let me go inside. You see, the steering wheel is just greasy and oily after lots of driving. So, the odometer is now 347,000. Well, let me see. Okay, there, I had to find the button on the camera. Yeah, almost 350k. So when I had it, the first two and a half years, I drove 245k first two years. I drove, basically I drove about 100k per year. Ever since I sold it, it has only done around 20k per year. Yeah, and then the range is 265. And when the battery was new, it's supposed to be when you charge it to 100% in the old days, it was around 375 kilometers. Now the car, if you charge it to 100%, it claims around 350. So it seems to not have had too crazy degradation. But I'm going to show you something else here. I have this cable here and I have the OBD adapter. And I now have scanned my Tesla. And we can see some variables in here. I, did, I think this one might need some more, some more. Uh, I need to spend a lot of time, man. 
but I can just show you guys the one you want to know about. Some of these values are also kind of weird, but um, AC, well, these values here, DC charge total, AC charge total, were added later. So that's why they are miss, uh, they are not correct. But the charge total is in fact correct. So you see we have, we have charged about 79,000 kilowatt hour and that corresponds with the consumption and the, and the distance driven. Oh, hang on, oops. So it makes sense when you look at these numbers. Yeah, about, about 80,000 kilowatt hour is what we have put through the, the battery. But wait, was this from start or was it with this battery? Because the battery was replaced after 86K. So it means that this battery is only about uh, 260K something. Yeah. All right, anyway, let me go back here. The one you want to see is, um, here we see some range, here we see full, full typical range. The car claims 354. And then, wait, wait, did I skip past it? Look where there's lots of, lots of test stuff here. Okay, I think I skipped past it. There's so many variables here, but these variables are slightly different than from a Model 3. But uh, I think I skipped, yeah, yeah, wait, wait, here. Nominal full pack, 70 kilowatt hour. What this means is that supposedly if you charge it 100%, you should be able to get under ideal conditions 70 kilowatt hour until the car shuts down. But you see, you have also energy buffer, four kilowatt hour. It's slightly bigger than the Model 3, which has 3.3 kilowatt hour, which means that if you take this one minus this, you get around 66 kilowatt hour. And then usually you, you subtract a little bit of losses and you get 65. And that is what you can expect from 100% to 0%. And I usually don't count anything below zero, but supposedly you can do it if the battery is well calibrated. And when I draw it back, I actually notice, I tried to measure it and I, I, the conclusion was that I estimated it to be 65 kilowatt hour before I even connected the USB. I mean the, the, the OBD. And then the OBD confirms by suspicion that we have about 65 kilowatt hour, which means that the, the degradation so far seems to be 13%. Uh, but uh, Tesla is doing something with these old packs. So they have uh, software limited them when it comes to charging speed and also capacity. So uh, once they sort it out, they will probably unlock it. So there's supposedly something that Tesla is working on. And you see that it has the, the new and more updated uh, info, well, like <laughs> infotainment. It, it looks less like a Model 3-ish, or it looks like a more model, more modern Model S. But the screen is an earlier revision, but as far as I remember, it hasn't been replaced in at least five years. I had one screen replacement uh, in 2014 or 15, I don't remember. But another problem is that it doesn't have the 4G upgrade. So right now we are lucky to have 3G here, but as soon as you move out of this, this 3G zone, it will only be edge 2G. And that means that navigation, everything is pretty slow. Even just changing music here is pretty slow. And we also have another problem here. If I use auto, you will hear something weird soon. When I have air conditioning on, you hear that hissing sound. Uh, there, there's probably something leaking. Uh, the, the air conditioning is uh, kaput or something. It's, there are indications that the air conditioning is not working. So that's why I switch it off. Oh, ooh, my bad. No, no, no. Yeah, what else do you want to see? Okay, let me switch lights. You see, it's kind of familiar to today's uh, uh, UI. And also this weird screen you see here is only available for the classic ones before autopilot. So there's no autopilot, there's no auto steer no adaptive cruise control but also no um, um, no phantom braking and the dotted line here is region limit and then we have some information about the uh, trip here this is also familiar for many of you guys uh, let me see oh my neighbor just came home let me move move the car a little bit forward so we get better space here let me see so i mean it still drives 
and remarkably well for such an old car, I have to say. Uh, the only problem is that it charges fairly slow. But let me see, let me check the backup camera. I mean, I have, I, we have so much stuff to catch up with, with Millennium Falcon. Like, the backup camera looks really dim. Maybe because the previous owner has been uh, scraped, it is rubbing the lens, I'm not sure. I tried to at least squirt on it to clean it. Uh, but also, you, I don't know if you can see it, but the, the resolution and the color depth on this screen is not as good as the, the, the new ones, especially the one with autopilot. It came with higher resolution and, and better screens. So everything here is just old school. But, wait, hold on. Let me, just, let me just drive around a little bit. I can stop here, I guess. So, let me see. Um, this, the condition on the, the passenger seat, though, is quite much better because it, it wasn't that much in use when I had it. I'm not sure how it was when, with the other owners. So, you see, it's in fairly okay condition. And also, over here, there's supposed to be some dents that I caused when I did the, the nimber task. Uh, but also to my big surprise, the interior in general looks nice and fresh. It doesn't have any weird damage or something. So you see, and also in the old days, this was leather, this was leather. I think also real cow leather. And then later revision, they started putting Alcantara here. But you see that we have Alcantara on the top here. And we have, yeah, this is the flimsy design, oh, hold on. without light. This is the old design, man. I remember this now when I, wow, I haven't seen this in a while. Same here, you see, this broke at least once, I think I got it on warranty. And it's still the same flimsy design. But so you see, Tesla has been, and it's also freaking hard to open it. So Tesla has been improving over the years, really. Just seeing, seeing this car, uh, it's like seeing a part of history, really. And then I have the sunshade mesh grill on that one. I took it off on the, the rear one. I still have it. That's the one in the trunk. So uh, what else should I say about this car, man? Yeah, uh, manual cruise control stock here. And also in the old car, the cruise control stock was here. And then the turn signal is in the lower one. But then from when we ha started getting the, the AP cars, from 2014, 15 and so on. These two stocks change place. So it's always a little bit confusing when you go from the old to the new one and you, you mistake the, the stocks. <laughs> and also they think there's something wrong with the horn. I'm gonna try to show you guys here. So if I try to honk, it's supposed to be that and it's, it's, it's like one tone is missing, you know? So there's, there's something, this car really needs some loving really <laughs> but man am i glad to be back in millennium falcon and are you guys happy to see millennium falcon uh, let me go inside it's quite actually quite hot now it's, it's let me lower this one a bit Ugh. so i guess maybe you guys want to see a little bit more outside and this is this is also um, um carbon fiber trim yeah it's kind of hard to see it now because of the circumstances i was not able to film that early oh yeah i forgot to show you guys here we have this big open center console in the old early days it was just wide open this is just a, an add-on strap-on thing to just create this is really just one open space and it's actually nice to have this accessory so you you kind of divide it and then you can put some some sheet in here you see and that one so that one is nice cup holders are like this you slide them yeah so very very interesting <laughs> millennium falcon he's back and what the heck is this mr green what is that <sighs> i have so much to tell you guys <sighs> and also i want to know by the way how many people still remember millennium falcon <sighs> okay let me see let me um let me park somewhere all right we are now in the garage so um this is the first time that uh, Millennium Falcon is staying in the garage because Millennium Falcon was sold before the new garage was built and then only Optimus Prime and MC Hammer was camping in here, you know? 
So uh, let me just rewind back to the whole story. For you guys who don't know what uh, Millennium Falcons. No what is that light? Oh, okay, we have light. Okay, whatever. Yeah. Um, so I bought this Tesla model uh, SP85 back in 2013 for 680,000 nook. That was my very first Tesla. I drove all around Norway with it, all around Europe, a long time before the supercharger network was that well established. And also when I had not many uh, subscribers out there. And also back then I also had an office job, full-time office job. And I was doing this more like a hobby. And in the weekends I would drive and I figured out that, okay, one way to pay for this car is to uh, buy a somewhat expensive car and then do nimble tasks. And I put lots of stuff in the car. It was, it was a great way for me to, uh, to make an excuse to drive around Norway because I put lots of stuff in here, like wheels, furniture, whatever, mainly wheels and furniture. And I drove around Norway and I made videos. Well, let me see if I had to wave there. Yeah, I had to do this, the, the waving cut. Um, went all over Norway and Europe, but mainly in the Nimber task was around Norway. And I show people that this car will work just fine for, for traveling, long trips, for supercharging, whatever, and even some AC charging. And then after a while, okay, and then I, we had Tesla introduced the referral program. It was, I think it was 2014 or 15, 15 or something. And I was so lucky because I had been gathering some, uh, lots of followers and, and people started buying Tesla because of me. Because back then there were almost no YouTubers out there. It was mainly me over here and Cayman Auto in America. He still has the channel, by the way. And so when the referral program came, Tesla announced that the first one to get 10 referrals, they will win a Tesla Model X fully loaded. And I was so lucky that lots of people sh helped me share the, the, the referral code. And I was the first one to reach what, uh, 10 subscribers. And that's how I won Optimus Prime. And then um, because I won Optimus, then I didn't need this car anymore. So that's why I sold. Is it better if you have light there? Yeah. Then I sold Millennium Falcon in 2016 summer. And then I haven't seen Millennium Falcon since 2016. So it's been, it's been almost, oh, it's been five years. Wow, man. Do I miss him? <laughs> uh, because meanwhile, I had Optimus Prime. You guys know the story. Many of you guys at least know Optimus Prime. I pulled around, pulled the trailer and stuff. And then I eventually sold Optimus and I bought the Model 3 Performance MC Hammer. And I recently sold him. And then I wasn't sure, oh sorry. I wasn't sure what car to buy. And I've been like a little bit back and forth. Okay, maybe I, I borrow some car from Marcus Beal, the long range, um, I mean, sorry, the, the standard range plus Model 3. That will of course be tested nonetheless. But then, um, Mr. Green, you guys saw the, the sticker on the side here. They are um, a company in the Netherlands. They are a leasing company. They have a big ass fleet of lots of Teslas in the Netherlands. They are looking to expand throughout Europe. And they saw my video about me, maybe wanted to borrow a car, you know, I'm like free to do whatever I like. And they wanted to provide me a car, but they are located in Netherlands and yeah, because of COVID especially. And then how, I mean, even if they're going to lend me a car from Netherlands, huh, I'm going to drive around with a Dutch license plate here. Uh, I think there are some rules about that one also. I'm not too long, you know. And I was planning on driving around within six months waiting for the Plaid Plus, right? Uh, that one has also been changed, by the way. It's a long range now, but I'll come back to that in another video. Um, so instead, they said that, okay, they, they're going to, sponsor me with a car but i just have to buy the car myself in norway and then well i mean they're gonna i mean i had to pick a model 3 that's what they suggested a model 3 with not too high mileage and then i will um, uh, they will buy it and i will just use it and then eventually they will just sell it or maybe ship it somewhere uh, because they're also planning on uh, establishing in denmark soon so that was the plan, you know, I was thinking, okay, okay, I can get the Model 3, yeah, why not? Um, but then I asked them, hey, I have this crazy idea about bringing back Millennium Falcon. And the guy there, he was like, Millennium what? Is it? I don't expect people to know what Millennium Falcon is. Um, and, and I told him about the whole story about Millennium Falcon. And 
he was excited about this and um, uh, the marketing department they was excited about this and also the more I think about it the more excited about this I am also because it's an old car yes it needs some loving but uh, over the years I made connection with many different companies like like uh, pit stop build player uh, that's a detailer Grand Auto Design detailer um, uh, EV services, repair shop, uh, lots of Tesla expertise. Um, we have a build expert in Bosch, similar expertise in uh, EVs, also lots of e Tesla knowledge. So they just, they want to uh, repair because their, their philosophy is that it's better to repair than to throw away or, you know, throw away something and then put in something new, but repair it is cheaper and it's also better for the environment. So they were thrilled when they heard that I was bringing back Millennium Falcon. Okay, enough about that, but, and back to Mr. Green. So instead of me buying a Model 3, I would instead get Millennium Falcon back. And this would be my project to drive around with this car and maybe do some degradation test, show how the car has been holding up, what kind of issues it have how to repair it uh, not too expensive because the warranty is out and actually this year the drivetrain and battery warranty will run out at in this 22nd of november <laughs> what's going to happen then if something breaks down you know some critical part well we'll know but uh, yeah <laughs> it's nicer actually when you have the light here i know there's about uh, maybe a pro timer uh, but there's a timer i can adjust but so um so that was the the approach then that with mr green okay uh they're gonna provide me with at least this car instead and then we figured out okay uh, you know what the, what works best is that i will just buy Millennium falcon myself and then they will cover the expenses like repairs maintenance and also depreciation because if it wasn't for mr green then i wouldn't buy back Millennium falcon because i know that an old car needs i mean it's going to be somewhat expensive ish to repair them uh but we will see you see because okay so i now i have mr green have my back wait also the other way yeah well it's not no, mr green got my back now in case there's some expensive repairs then they will cover it and they will also cover the depreciation uh and then in return I will bring out the word about Mr. Green, and you know it's not just some Nike or something. I mean, it's it's as a leasing company that m might have the potential to to establish through the whole of Europe, and also they have electric. They have lots of Tesla, so they have that's right down my alley. So that's why I want to promote them, and I'm just super grateful that they can make it happen that we can bring back Melinda Falcon. Yeah, so that's the whole story about it. Uh, but so. Um, yeah, that's the plan. I'm gonna keep Millennium Falcon for, I don't know, until the, the new Model S refresh arrives. And then my plan was to sell him. But I have a new idea, which is that I might keep him forever. But that will be covered in another episode because this video is already too long and I need to kind of gather my mind a little bit and then plan and then explain to you guys what the future plan with Millennium Falcon is but um, the way it looks like now is that I will probably not sell Millennium Falcon it wasn't I mean it wasn't a mistake that I sold him no I, I mean it needed it needed to be done because I couldn't simply keep lots of cars in my yard but now I'm in the position where I think I can keep Millennium Falcon. I also want to keep him. I don't want to let go of him. It has some sentimental value, really. Uh, and also, now nowadays, more and more Model 3s are getting... I mean, sorry, more and more Model S are getting old. And, you know, they are not garbage. They are still fully drivable cars. And they just need a little bit of loving, a little bit of fixing, but you don't have to always do the most expensive way, which is to go to Tesla. And the Tesla, they, again, no offense, but it seems like they don't care too much about old cars. They just want to service the newer, newer Model 3s and whatever, fix bugs or whatever. And then old cars tend to get less attention. But then, fortunately, we have EV services and, and, um, uh, uh, uh what was it again? 
Bosch car service and also many, many other companies. I think I heard about the Elbilmec uh, or something, but there are more and more of these companies. And also in, in US, you have Electrified Garage that can take care of all cars. What well, they do, I don't know, they probably do all, also do all cars. So, you know, this is really going to be a really interesting summer for me to see how we can bring back, um, restore uh, Melinda Falcon again, and maybe also take a little bit of road trips and stuff and see how it goes, <laughs> really. I think I have to, for good old sake, also have to camp in Melinda Falcon. Melinda Falcon has been getting all the software upgrades, like dog mode, camp mode, uh, yeah, whatever, uh, but not games because um, the MCU is too old, but uh, at least the screen doesn't have the yellow border it's still in good condition it hasn't bricked yet but of course we're going to also look into that what we can do to prevent it from bricking and so on and what we can do to prevent i mean to avoid the the, the usual issues that all teslas have so to me it sounds like this this car really is super interesting for me to own this summer and to do all this test and degradation test and whatever so Man, I am excited. I don't know about you guys, but um, this is a pretty long video, but... Come on, come on, yeah. And I actually like the studio because it's quite bright. You see, we have bright headliners. So maybe I should make Millennium Falcon my uh, my studio from now on. It's, it's pretty nice and neat. And also the thing is that I can just put the camera right on the dashboard without having to put it on some uh, suction cup. But except when, when I when I move, it kind of shakes, but I, I guess we can live with that. So. Wow, so, man, okay, so, oh, oh, shit, yeah, the light, okay, that was a little trick I used. Uh, I used a trick to get some lights. I actually re reflect the, the headlights towards the garage door to get this kind of, so it's, um, it's nice, you know, uh, it's nice to use a car as a studio because there are very few parallel uh, sides which then creates, uh, you know, could create reflection. So the car should have uh, good acoustics for recording audio. We can we can try, I guess, by clapping. You see, there's all literally almost no echo in here. So good acoustics, and since I'm talking about cars, then why don't I record video in a car, right? So, man, Millennium Falcon is back guys there's gonna be lots and lots of follow-up videos about questions you guys want to know I, I stuff i still haven't told you guys about the future plans with Millennium falcon and what i'm going to do with Millennium falcon but it's going to be quite busy and entertaining and interesting and lo uh, useful summer spring winter yeah so i think that's going to be it for now and oh yeah, okay last one last thing do you guys notice that i changed jacket I usually I've been wearing another jacket, the Stormbag jacket. This is Stormbag. I should be sponsored by Stormbag. I used to wear another Stormbag jacket that had a different color, uh, but now I'm wearing the black jacket. And this one, this black Stormbag jacket, was the jacket I was wearing when I drove with Millennium Falcon. If you guys go back to the old videos and you see I wore a black Stormbag jacket, this is the one. I'm now in the right uniform now for Millennium Falcon, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to cry now. So anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.